Good morning and welcome to the press briefing of today. We have them daily, Monday to Friday, every week. We keep you informed with what is happening and what may be happening later. In situations like this, you can never be absolutely certain. It's a fluid thing and sometimes what you think you can do, something else comes up. This happens in any disaster anywhere. But we try to keep you updated with what in fact has happened based on what we receive. Please bear in mind that we're just the press office. We take the details of anything from whoever gives it to us from the various business places or government departments. And later on, I'll read the update. But today, let me welcome the media, the Kyrie FM, DBS Radio, and Vibes Radio. I do not know if Q95 is already operating, but whoever is there, welcome. And Facebook and YouTube, welcome as well, those who are watching and listening. And the international community, the diaspora or diaspora, also welcome to this daily briefing. Today we have a very special person. We have the president of the Dominica State College. As you know, education is most important. Everybody is complaining that the children, the students are out of school and you know what can happen when you let students free to roam for a long period of time. We're unfortunately in a situation where that has to be with most of the students. But the president of the Dominica State College is Dr. Donald Peters. I think you know that. And he's here to tell us what's been happening at the college, what may happen, and what, how he sees, perhaps he sees education, the, the, the forward movement on getting education, the educational processes back on track. So let me invite him to the microphone. He has, he's a busy man, he has a lot to do. So please, Dr. Donald Peters. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Uh, we have been absent on the scene for a while, so this probably is our first time speaking to the nation in terms of what occurred um, at the State College by Hurricane Maria. As for those who do not know, Dominica State College is the only public higher education ed institution in the country, and as such, it is critical for the development of our country in terms of higher education for students who attend secondary schools. So one can well imagine how important it is for transition of students. So, and uh, currently we have about 1,890 students at all times um, at the State College. Hurricane Maria did devastated our institution um, physically. Um, I will just tell you what happened in terms of the physical aspect of the ravages of the hurricane. The total number of buildings we have on both the lower campus and upper campus are 21. The number of those that lost the roof, um, nine totally lost the roof, and um, the other 12 have severe damages to the roof, which means that none of those um, buildings can be occupied by students. as only those with second floors, and that again has problems because during the hurricane, we, the ravages of the hurricane, we also had the ravages of humans, which looted all our computers, all our equipment, TV screens, and all of the others. So we had a, a real disadvantage. Um, all audiovisual equipment uh, gone. All IT connections to our buildings have been compromised and have to be replaced. Our Wi-Fi connections have been gone, and all our laptop projectors, useful lectures, are also gone. So, what should we do? Well, Dominica State College is a resilient institution. We try at all times to stay ahead of the game. And um, at, the, at first sight, when I saw the devastation, uh, and I met with my senior staff, and we decided January would be the only time possible to open the college. Um, on revision and after discussion with the Prime Minister and the Minister of Education, we felt, they told me that um, we should do something to open the institution before. Um, as Mr. Joseph pointed out, and as a social scientist, I know that if you leave adolescents on the road for more than two months, there can be a lot of consequences. 
And, and in addition, students get despaired. Um, they get depressed when they look ahead and they can't see any way out. And that's not good either. So we have to give them hope. So I met with the staff again and we decided that we're going to move to open school on November 6th for second year students. That's almost 500 students. And those finishing the, who are going to do the A-levels, KIP, those who want to graduate by December, finish courses, others who require gen ed courses, all of those um, factors bring anxiety to students. So we decided to go ahead and open campus for November 2nd. November 6th, sorry. That in itself is going to take a human effort. Um, the first thing we've done is to apply for a CDB grant to open the college. And I, if CDB is listening, I trust they will be considerate and approve the grant request and so that we can move on with getting the equipment we require to open the institution. Um, the faculty and staff have been gracious. They have been here. They have been working, helping clean classrooms and um, to understand the magnitude of what we have to do we normally have 40 free classrooms in which we deliver instructions we currently have only eight and that also has to house administrative um, staff and um, faculty so it's going to be a, a very interesting adventure to do it but we are committed to do that and uh, when I left before I left um, I was informed that we are now going to offer at least 92 classes a week, Monday to Friday, from 8.35 to 3.45 every day. So it's, we're trying to get everybody in the routine of classroom instructions, and hopefully we'll get our labs and our IT um, system um, back on track. Initially, of course, we'll do the old chalk and talk teaching um, for the first couple of weeks, but then it, it is the 21st century. We cannot do that all the time. We need technology for over um, classrooms, uh, lectures. We need the labs. We need um, our microscopes. We need our laptops. We need servers. And we, of course, need um, Wi-Fi. So, but, but we are optimistic. We are working with the um, agencies responsible for those. Um, most recently, we asked the Domlek to make us a priority a center for reconnection and hopefully that will be done um i would uh, while i'm here i'd personally like to thank the many lecturers and our dedicated staff and maintenance crew in particular for their conscientious work and dedication to the institution some of them have lost everything they possess so one have all lost a member of a family but they're resolute and they have come back to college to help us open so that other students or students of the nation can have access to college. So people may ask, well, what happened to first-year students? Two things. If there's a first-year student who want to come and do gen ed courses, they're free to do that um, on November 6th. But we will open in the new year for year one and year two students. And um, what we're going to try to do is run two semesters from January to July. It's going to be a miracle, but we can do it. And I'm sure the faculty and staff will be very supportive of, of that effort. Um, so we need to also tell people what we've been doing since the hurricane, because um, I got the impression that people felt that me in particular, the president, had deserted the ship and, <laughs> and I wasn't there for the hurricane. But I was actually in Dominica and suffered loss of roof and window like everybody else. But knowing who I am, I could not sit by and just wait for government to help. So on the Sunday, I hopped a little one-seater plane and went to Antigua and then to the U.S., to the Massachusetts, to appeal to sister colleges and universities to assist us in this time of need. And um, my aim was to get ourselves linked to the um, fundraising mechanism, not only for the relief, because most of them pointed out that they were helping um, Houston, Florida, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and Mexico earthquake at the time. So Dominica was six on the list. So we are optimist, optimistic that in the future, funds or assistance will roll in 2018, 2019, because the damages to our college is substantial. And um, relief efforts for this month or next month is not what we're looking for. We're actually looking long-term rebuilding. 
And so we are optimistic that down the line, universities will help us. We also teamed up with an organization in Boston called Bo Boston for Dominica. It's an organization um, of Dominicans, young Dominicans, who have found a charitable um, organization for funding, for raising funds for um, relief. And they also have a what we call a 101 free C, which is a tax deductible um, licenses. So if um, people make donations to that institution in the United States, it's um, deductible. And we partnered with them um, through Bank of America. So institutions or individuals who want to make um, donations to our campus can do so through the Bank of America across the United States. Um, now, uh, one of the things we had to do is figure out how we're going to offer courses and um, what courses um, are needed. And we've completed this. And currently, the, what we plan to do on November 6th is offer eight um, courses for health sciences in the Faculty of Health Sciences, seven in the Faculty of Education, there's a small faculty, um, 22 in the Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology, and 55 in the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Um, as I indicated, students are asked to come from 8.30 to 3.45 for obvious reasons. For Those who commute to the rural areas will require buses, so uh, we don't want them to be in, in the city too late. And secondly, we will do not believe that we will have electricity by November 6, although we've taken the, the initiative to order a um, generator that can power the entire upper campus, and that should be there by Friday. Of course, we had to quit it because we have no funds, so we're on Quidi. But, um, but we hopefully we'll get the grant and that will take care of it. My responsibility is to make sure we, we have power, and so we've taken the, the um, be proactive in getting that on board. Um, we expect at least 500 second-year students, and um, one of the things we did uh, um, to prepare, since we are a scientific organization, we wanted students to come and tell us if they're coming back. And people thought they were re registering. That wasn't a registration. It was just A, to meet the students, see what happened to them, and B, to tell them, please come back so we know they're coming back and prepare for X amount of students. That has been successful. The students came. And now we know who will be with us on, um, on November 6th. And for students who are listening, some of the courses being offered is Math 105, 125, Math 115, Accounting 111, Chemistry 111, Geography 113, Bio 112, Business 1121, Physics 112, Mass Communication 111, Tourism 113, Physics Econ 11, Math 121, Accounting 114, um, and um, you, when you come in on Tuesday, you can check the rest. This is just a sample of the courses um, that we will be offered beginning next week. Um, one of the things we also want to do is um, remind and thank the government. Uh, when we said that most of our buildings were destroyed and only two of them had roofs, the two that are actually working are um, the Center for Excellence, which we had borrowed to the Ministry of Technology, they had refurbished that building and was using it for the Center of Excellence. And now they have um, allowed us to take it over and use that as part of our um, instruction classes. So that building alone has two extra classes plus the IT area. So that has been very, very um, instrumental in our ability to reopen on the 6th. And I would like to thank the Ministry of Technology and the senior staff for cooperating with us on this um, effort to help our country and our institution. Um, I also understand that some of the high schools are open. I'm, I'm glad because um, we are like the transition institution where students come from the high schools to us, and uh, CX is important for us and for them. And uh, obviously, the students seem that will be prepared, appear to be prepared for um, CXE um, next year. So the outlook is um, for us, the we see the glasses half filled and um, we have plans to keep on 
doing what it takes to get our, our um, college back on track. Uh, one of the things we will do is continue to write our grants for in, to international institutions um, through the Ministry of Education. And, um, and we, we already are uh, in contact with people like Habitat for Humanity, who we hope will come help um, in the summer um, renovate buildings and other institutions, um, mostly in higher education, who have volunteered to work with us on some of our needs, which are going to be significant, seeing that we have lost so many um, materials and, and even personnel. Some people, of course, um, hurt by the hurricane have, decided, have left. Um, others are probably shell-shocked. And so we may need to, in, the, in January, borrow faculty from other institutions. And one of the other um, difficulty for us is uh, trying to, um, disaster of that magnitude has um, traumatized some of the students and faculty and staff. And today, beginning today, we have some socio-psychological counseling for both faculty and students, and that will continue throughout the first week. So um, I'm asking students, if they feel that they're not ready for class, feel free to talk to the counselors who will be available on those dates. Um, at this point, that's where we are. To the people of Dominica, we want to tell them to be hopeful, to, to look forward to the students being educated. Um, we believe that is our responsibility and um, we're working with the Ministry of Education. We plan to get a huge tent from UNDP. So it's constant. We have not stopped working. We go to work in the morning and leave in the afternoon just like we used to do before, even though we have very small quarters. But that is the game. That is our goal. And um, certainly the people of the country can count on us to deliver higher education to the students. Uh, Dr. Peters, you touched on it briefly, but there are a lot of students not only of the college, but of the other schools who are now walking around. Is there any idea that you have what could be done about getting them occupied? Yes. Well, um, one of the things we thought about um, to do, because you're very correct, is January is a long way. It's happening now. The students with, um, no, who are at home doing nothing, so one of the things we've asked, and, and we are in fact getting calls from um, humanitarian organizations who want to engage the students to help them work. And so we will be doing that on DBS, and maybe next week some of my staff will come and tell the students what they can do. And um, if we get electricity, we want to work with the social services and the Ministry of Education to provide after-school um, projects for them. But the, I agree with you, we have to keep them engaged um, in whatever capacity. But we believe that some of the, those who can go work with the humanitarian groups that are here will be um, a way out or something they can do to pass the time until January. You said that um, your staff is all there at the college. Well, most of them. Are there? We there. Some have been really traumatized. They've lost their everything they have. I mean, it, it's um, to be in a situation like mine where um, you have to deal with these massive losses of individuals, human beings. It's very, very difficult and complex. So I don't have time to think about myself because I see people hurt a lot more than I do, and a couple of them can't teach. But, because um, it's, I yes. suppose it's an involved, delicate process. Yes and they would now feel that they just can't do it. Yes, and uh, those we will empathize and get counseling and therapy. And one of the things I've asked my staff to do is to work with all the agencies in the country, and we are doing that to help. So some person might need help with a yard, some person might need help with um, building materials, water supply, so we contact with the various groups here who are responsible for that, and they have responded. And um, we need to continue doing that. Or the Department of Student Services, that is their responsibility. As a social scientist, looking at the broader picture, would you think that the educational processes have been slowed down tremendously in a way that would affect the forward movement of students, their learning? I think one of the things that I've learned, and I've told some of my colleagues, 
as an educator, I look back and think that in some way we have to step back and re-look at what we do in terms of education. If you ask me, yes, we will continue to do the CXC, and I, I think all that will fall into place again, but that's not all. When you have a country that is hit by a, a disaster of that magnitude, and human beings who have gone through education believe it's okay to steal from other people, we fail as educators. Where's the morality that the human being that you taught has? Where's the ethics? What are we raising? What, what did we teach? Uh, some of my students were looting. They were. So I failed. So I believe that we in the in Ministry of Education and the nation have to step back and look at our education models. Passing CXC is not all. Teach ethics. Teach respect for people, respect for property, respect laws. From the time they're in kindergarten, that must be taught. So if this, when I talk to people with business, they said, Maria hit us, but the people hit us harder. Is that where we... We want to go. And then we have a, a, a nation with 26% have higher education in Dominica, pretty high, almost the same as the United States. Um, 20 years ago, we were at 4%. So we, people are educated. The, the government is providing education for the entire nation, which is good. But I believe that the education we give them as a nation must change. See, we must prepare them for CXC and A-levels and all of those things, but we must teach them the fundamental aspects of being a human being what it is as an we still do not understand that we are a nation we believe that somebody is responsible for us we are one of 192 nations in the united nations with our flag our national anthem and our responsibility we are responsible for us so when you go and rob mr joseph you hurt in the nation you hurt in his family you hurt in yourself and you hurt in everybody else it is connected if you believe that there's no connection to what we do then obviously we fail so I don't want to be a preacher, but you ask me a question as a scientist, and I see, and the person responsible for education at the high level in Dominica, we need to relook at this. Maria might should wake us up. Well said, Dr. Peters, and thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you. We done? We done? Dr. Donald Peters, President of the Dominica State College. At the end, he gave us his views on what he thinks should be the way forward. And I totally agree that if we have people who think that stealing and looting is the only way forward for them, then we have a problem. We have to start to rethink how we're doing things and how we must act with our educational methods in the future. We move on to an update, the update from Dominica Electricity Services, Domlek. And Domlek is saying in Roso, the additional areas that were cut powered and most of the city has been powered. The western side of Independence Street has been energized and it is hoped that Roso Central will be fully restored by this month end. And work is also ongoing in the Belfast feeder from Ravin Cock, and the feeder is being rebuilt. Work to restore the Canefield Industrial Estate is ongoing, and it is hoped that that work will be completed October 29th. And then we have the lower portion of Federation Drive completed October 24th, and work ongoing in the following areas as well. To State Prison, completion by October 27th. That should have been been done. State College completion by October 27th. That's when? That's tomorrow, is it? And Foncola Industrial Site completion by November 4th. Pottersville, the intersection of Elliott Avenue and Goodwill completed by October 31st. And the section of Bath Estate completed by October 31st. More transformers are being tested and will be energized. Reconnections to customers in Roseau have been recertified, is ongoing. A number of domestic customers already have power. Then in Portsmouth, work ongoing in the Picard area up to Portsmouth Beach Hotel. Lines are being strong with ongoing work to the Kempinski or the Kempinski Hotel. Or the Kemp 
Pinsky Hotel worksite, that is. Pay as you go customers in Rose who have been reconnected can purchase power only at the Domlek main office. And this, the Domlek people are reminding persons to refrain from piling dirt, debris, galvanized, etc., at the base of poles. Businesses and homeowners in the Rose and Portsmouth area should commence recertification with the electrical division. That is an update from Domlek. That's it for today. Just to remind you that we do this every day here, Monday to Friday. And we hope that this has been of assistance to you as we go along. If you need kindness, you must be kind. If you need truthfulness, you must be truthful. What you need is a reflection of you. If you need Dominica to make progress, to rebuild, you must rebuild Dominica. So that later on, years from now, whatever happens to Dominica will be a reflection of you. So let's get to work. Thank you.